Anya, welcome to Elsa Unplugged. Thank you for having me, Steve. Really excited to be featuring you. I came across you on Instagram at Black Esquire LLC. You're putting out a lot of great information for law school applicants. So we want to share a little bit about what you do. Sure. So um, as Steve mentioned, my name is Anya. I am the founder and principal of Black Esquire LLC. And what Black Esquire is, is an organization that provides opportunities and resources for Black and minority legal professionals. So my goal is to help you as a uh, a student of color get into law school. And most of what I spend my time doing is one-on-one -on -one coaching. I also have a blog where I write about different um, uh, things that are of interest to students that I work with. And I also have uh, Black Esquire magazine, which just came out with its first edition uh, this summer. Um, so most of the time I'm working with students that are looking to get into law school, but I also coach students that are in law school and help them with things such as their um, final exams. And I also coach students that have graduated law school that need some assistance passing the bar exam. Fantastic. You're really doing valuable work and I'm glad that we're sharing your advice with everyone here. So I'm looking the, forward to it. Great. So I know one of the things that law school applicants are looking for help with is their application, specifically all those essays they have to write, the personal statement, the diversity statement. And I get a, this question from students a lot, actually, how they figure out which topic to use for which statement. Yep, yep. It's, it's definitely something that's common. And so hopefully I can help fill in some of the gaps for that. Um, so I work with students on both. Um, and the personal statement is something that everyone is required. I don't know any law school application that isn't going to require you to do some sort of personal statement. And that's really your opportunity to talk about yourself. Um, obviously, the LSAT and your GPA score is something that the law school admissions committee is going to look at, but at that point, you're just a number. And to be quite frank, you could be um, being put up against someone that has the same LSAT score and the same GPA as you, and at that point, you are at the same place. But in order for you to stand out, you need to tell them your story and why you think that you should be admitted over the other person that has the same numbers as you. Awesome. Thanks for that detailed breakdown. Really useful to have. So we know personal statement is important, diversity statement is important, but still, to what extent can those topics overlap? And how do we know which topic to ultimately choose for which one? Because the both of them should involve your story in some way, right? Absolutely. So they're both some aspect of storytelling. I like to think of the diversity statement as you talking about some aspect of your identity. So your personal statement might be something that talks about um, maybe you volunteered at a homeless shelter while you were in school and that got you interested in the law and you had some personal experience and connection to that. That's a personal statement topic. A diversity statement topic might be something more about you overcoming some aspect of adversity, um, you talking about your identity as a black female or someone who is uh, transgender, and then why you think your aspect of diversity has some sort of asset to the law school classroom. Right. Thanks for sharing that. That makes a lot of sense. Appreciate the breakdown. Now, what happens if a school doesn't have a diversity statement question listed? How can applicants that still work that in? Sure. So that happens often. Some schools don't tag it exactly as a diversity statement, but they may um, give you an optional essay or some opportunity to just write something else about yourself. And for me, I tell all of my students, you should take every opportunity that you can to write something about yourself. Because remember, you do not know these people. They don't know who you are. So every chance you can get to tell them a little bit of something extra about yourself, it's important. So in that sense, I usually tell students, if there's an optional essay, write something different about yourself. That's your diversity statement. That's where you talk about um, a specific challenge that you've overcome or the fact that you grew up in a single family household, right? Um, sometimes they'll tag it as talk about something where um, you had a challenge and you overcame that challenge. That can also be a diversity statement and just uh, frame it in the aspect of you being a diverse person and what you did to overcome those um, circumstances that you've had against you. Right, right. So I guess you're defining diversity more broadly than just like traditional racial diversity or sexual orientation. So for those who don't fall within the typical underrepresented minority diversity categories, should they write a diversity statement? And what kind of topics do you see folks typically talking about in those circumstances? Yes. 
yes, absolutely. So you could be a white male. That doesn't mean you're not diverse and that you don't have something diverse about you that the admissions committee um, would want to see. So in that instance, I would talk about some other things. So as I mentioned, somebody could grow up in a single family household. Um, for me, my personal statement, I felt like talked a little bit more about who I was as a black female. So I actually took it upon myself to write my diversity statement about the fact that I majored in religion and went to an all women's college. So you know, I have something that maybe this other applicant doesn't have, and I have um, a diverse perspective on the world. And I just use that as an example to say um, what I can add to the classroom that somebody else may not have. Oh, that's really interesting. So folks could think of those more outside the box topics that may not even be within the conventional definitions of diversity, but anyone could still highlight something unique about themselves in that way. Absolutely. Like I said, everyone has something that they can write about. Um, you want to use every opportunity that you can to talk to these, um, talk to the admissions committee. So, of course, you know, someone who, um, you know, struggled with racism growing up uh, may have a different story to tell versus somebody else whose um, father, you know, moved away when they were a child and they had to be raised by their mother on their own. Different stories, but your job is to tell the admissions committee that you have something to offer and why you actually add something to that specific classroom and why you should be picked over another student. Awesome, Anya. Well, this has been fantastic. Really appreciate your sharing your advice with everyone in my audience. What's the best way for folks to reach you? And do you want to share a little more about the services you offer? Sure, absolutely. So as I mentioned, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I work with um, pre-law students. I also work with current law students. You can reach me on, at, via email at Anye, A-I-G-N-E, at BlackEsquire.com. And more information about the services that I offer and Black Esquire magazine can be found at www.BlackEsquire.com. I'm also on Instagram at Black.Esquire.LLC. And I'm also on Twitter and Facebook at Black Esquire LLC. Fantastic, Anya. Well, thanks again for connecting and look forward to being in touch. Thank you, Steve.